Hi folks, have you ever struggled to use the time traffic lights function in the traffic manager presence edition mod? Well if you have, then this video may be just what you're looking for. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to set up time traffic lights. Now I have to warn you, this part of the TMPE mod is quite complex and may not be for the faint of heart. And given the complexities, I'm going to do the best I can to cover all the necessary steps and functions. If during this tutorial there are parts of the time traffic lights that you have questions about or would like a deeper explanation of, be sure to leave me a little note below in the comments. Because I'm always looking for ideas for future tutorials. In order to produce this video, I had to reference the TMPE manual. I have included the links to that document in the description of this video. I just wanted to give a wonderful shout out and thank you to the folks that put that document together. Otherwise, this video might not have been possible. In this tutorial, I'm going to try to go above and beyond anything I've seen any other tutorial do on time traffic lights. But ultimately, you'll be the judge of whether or not I accomplish that goal. So now it's time to ease your pain by showing you a step-by-step -step methodology of setting up time traffic lights. So if you've got the moxie, stay with me and let's get started. Smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Or just give it a thumbs up for yourself so that you'll always be able to come back and watch it again if you need to. So first of all, we need to select an intersection that has the potential to be improved by the time traffic lights. Every intersection is a little different. In general, what we are looking for is a signalized intersection that exhibits one or more of the following types of problems. One or two of the legs of the intersection have long wait times or queue lengths in comparison to the other legs. Or, the pedestrians are impeding the traffic flow. Or, turning movement conflicts are fouling up traffic flow. As an example, vehicles may be trying to make left-hand turns and slowing down the through traffic or vice versa. Or we could have any combination of the above. Those are some of the types of typical traffic problems that can be solved by time traffic lights. So in terms of finding that right intersection, you'll find it simply through observation. In my case, I have chosen the intersection of Max Boulevard and Robert Street. Now that we have found that intersection and identified the problems, we can then start working on the solutions. Now you won't find this step in the TMPE manual, but this makes the most logical sense to me and that's why I have incorporated it into my approach. We can create more space by adding lanes to the legs of our intersection and by separating the different moves. At the intersection of Max Boulevard and Robert Street, we're going to upgrade the four lane cross section to five lanes with a dedicated left turn lane on all approaches. Now to do that, we're going to use the Upgrade Road Tool. So first we just click on Roads, and up pops Roads. And the upgrade is the exclamation mark. So we select the cross section that we want. In my case, I want that five lane cross section. Well, it's described as four lanes with a turning lane. Then we just click on the leg of the intersection, and we upgrade it. And I'm going to go down all the way to the at least the previous intersection to give them lots of storage space. Then I'm going to repeat that process on all the other legs of the intersection. And I'm going to go back a little farther on these ones. And we just hit X and shut that down. So now we have all the lanes we need to give the vehicles the space to make their moves. Step number three is to assign lane roles. So one of the problems in city skylines is that the vehicles appear to move through the intersection in a helter-skelter manner. At least that's what it looks like to me. Now I'm sure the vehicles are being driven by the AI in the game, but nonetheless we can get the vehicles to behave themselves by making their movements into the proper lanes and ultimately get the vehicles to behave in a more realistic fashion. To accomplish this, we're going to use the Lane Connector tool. And you might ask, well, why not use the Lane Arrows tool in the Traffic Manager Presence Edition? 
Well, the answer is that in my experience, it doesn't force vehicles to use the lane properly. Whereas if you use the lane connector tool, it'll force vehicles to use the lanes you have assigned to them and it will automatically change the lane arrows anyway. So I'll show you what I mean. So we click on the TMPE little symbol and then we click on the lane connector tool which is this symbol right here. It's a little yellow dot and a pink dot with then a little yellow dot. It's got a line on it. Those are the kind of symbols you're going to see once you start using it. So we click on that. The intersection highlights and now we just click on there and you'll notice that colored dots appear at the intersection on all four legs on each lane. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that vehicles use the lanes we assign to them. So let's start with the left hand turn lane. So we'll go from Robert Street. I just put my cursor over top of that button and you notice that that lane highlights. I left click on it drag it over and actually I'm not even holding my mouse click down I'm just moving the mouse and once it highlights just left click on it and now that is a dedicated left turn lane now if I right click that releases it so now I'll do the other left hand turn lanes And it may seem tedious, but we're going to do the same thing for all the other lanes on all the other legs of the intersection. So that keeps vehicles in their proper assigned lanes and stops them from running into each other, or at least helps prevent it anyway. So let's do that now. And no, I just want to correct something. I see I've got a left turn lane here and a left turn lane. There's my dedicated left turn lane. So actually that is not the one I want. This one's right, that one's right, this one's right. So let's just fix this one here. We'll just take that off by clicking on it and pulling it back. And then I right click and it releases. That's the lane there that I want to be dedicated left hand turn lane. So now we've corrected that. So now we're going to do the rest of the legs of the intersection and complete the exercise. So step number four in the TMP mod, we then go over to the time traffic lights button and it just looks like a little square white symbol. It's got a little tiny traffic light there. I don't know if you can see it, but we click on that. And now if we put our cursor over the intersection, you'll see that it highlights in a translucent blue and I just left click on that intersection to select that node or that junction. Next, we go over to the Select Nodes panel and we click on Setup Time Traffic Light. Now the Time Traffic Lights Manager panel pops up. And we have three options. We can add a step, add a junction to this traffic light, which means adding another intersection to have exactly the same set of uh, signal arrangement to it. Or we can remove this time traffic light. In any event, all we want to do in this case is add a step. So adding a junction or multiple junctions to this time traffic light would certainly be the subject of another video because what you're actually doing in that case is you're synchronizing multiple intersections or multiple sets of signals. So let's left click on add a step. Now that we've clicked on add a step at the intersection up pops translucent images of the traffic lights. Each traffic light is related to the leg of that intersection. So this traffic light here is actually in reference to this leg, this one to that leg, this one to that leg, and so on. So now let's click on the change mode button. So if I go in as close as I can, you'll see there's a button here. So there's the traffic signal head, there's the pedestrian signal head, and there's a change mode button. So if I click on change mode, you'll see that these other signals pop up. So now I have signals to control all the various different movements. So the first movement we're going to do is a left turn lane. So for that, we would make that go green 
and everything else remains red. And I'm going to make sure that that stays red. I'm going to put the pedestrian signal head on manual so that the pedestrians don't run out in front of the vehicles. So I'm going to do, put those on manual and what we'll do is we'll set up a last state or last phase of our signal timing will be for pedestrians only. So I'll hit change mode and we'll just hit that to manual, manual, and manual. And I want everybody to be red because I don't want those pedestrians going out there just yet. So he's got an advanced green on this phase and we'll give it green so they'll be basically directly opposing um, left turns at the same time. Now we set the time so I'm going to make it fairly short. I'm going to go three to six seconds and then we'll add it. And we can always come back later and in fact we probably will come back later monitor the intersection and see how it's doing and make adjustments if necessary. Now before I add another step you notice that there are other options on this panel. We can rotate the signal pattern left, we can rotate the signal pattern right, or back to where we had it. We can also copy this intersection. Now if I wanted I could add a junction to this traffic light. Now adding a junction to this traffic light as I think I may have mentioned before would really create signals at another junction or intersection which then we would what we'd be doing is we'd be synchronizing the signals at two different intersections and that really is a getting into a more advanced tuning and use of the time traffic lights manager and I think that's a subject for another day if you want to know more about how to synchronize signals or junctions let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do another tutorial on that particular subject. We can also remove a time traffic light and I don't want to do that because I just added that one in. We can also edit or view and we're already viewing it so I'm going to hit view nothing changes. You could edit it which means that will pop up again and then we can then make changes. So we'll add another step. So now that's going to go red and now we have the through movements. And again, I'm going to leave it three to six. That should work out. I'm going to add my next step. So now I'm going to add my next state, which is to give a dedicated left hand turn there and here. And then everything else here goes red. And we add that step. Then we add another step where this goes green, left hand turns are no longer moving, and we add that step. And we add one final phase, and that's where everything goes red for the traffic. And now we get the pedestrians to walk. And we add that step. I completed the time traffic light cycle pattern that I want, but I just want to go back for a second and add a step. I'm not going to really add a step, but I want to show you there are some other options here that uh, are worth noting. So if you look down here, it says after min time has elapsed, switch to the next step if. So these options place conditions or logic statements and those logic statements are applied to the minimum time. In this case the default is more traffic waiting than driving. My understanding of the default setting is what it, this now does is start registering vehicles that are both waiting at the junction and vehicles that are passing through the junction. If more vehicles are passing the junction than waiting in front of a red light, then this step remains active. If more vehicles are waiting, then the next step is activated, which we, we've created all the steps we want right now. As far as the other logic options go, someone is driving, someone is waiting, no one is driving, no one is waiting. 
Uh, I haven't used them. So why you might want to select them and what the actual result or impact uh, would be on your junction or intersection is beyond the scope of today's tutorial. But if you're interested, let me know. And perhaps if I'm feeling particularly courageous, that could be the subject of another tutorial. The last other option down here at the bottom is flow sensitivity. The default is 0.8, which is moderate green red phases. Changing this sensitivity would certainly be an advanced tuning, and again, that's beyond the scope of today's tutorial. But again, if you're interested, you want to know more about it, I'm willing to give a shot at it. If you want, uh, just leave a comment in the notes below. We'll just text that out. So let's just go back and review what we've done. If I use the edit button, if I click on the first state, you'll see that the advanced greens are in the, uh, I'll call it the east-west direction, but we got basically directly opposing advanced greens, which is what we want. Then I go to the second state. Now we have the through traffic. The third state, now we have the left turn vehicles making their moves on the other legs. The fourth state now goes green. And the last state is everything's red for the vehicles and now the pedestrians can make their moves. So the next step is to hit start. So now we can watch the time traffic lights that we have set up go into action. And we have some options. We can show counters by clicking on the show counters button. So let's do that. And now you can see the traffic signals counting down in their particular phases. We could stop the time traffic lights we've set up by hitting stop. And that would take us back to the time traffic lights manager panel. And then we go back to start if we want our signal phasing to continue. We can rotate left or rotate right. I've been over that before. And we could copy this signal phasing to another intersection. So if I were to click on copy and go down to another intersection, I could paste that right into that intersection. It's probably not appropriate, but I could if I wanted to. Hit stop. Now I could remove a time traffic light. So the next step is to observe traffic flow at the intersection. So let's watch what the intersection is doing, how the traffic is behaving, and see if we like our results. So I'll click on the toggle for the TMPE because I want all those symbols out of there so we can actually see what the traffic is doing. So it looks like the traffic is behaving themselves. The pedestrians are not getting in front of the traffic. So there's our phase where it's just our, or I should say our state that was just pedestrians. Now there's a left hand turn. Look, there are no vehicles getting in the way of each other. Now there's the through movement that goes through. So now our intersection is working very nicely and exactly the way it would or should in real life. So now all the vehicles are using their proper assigned lanes and they're behaving themselves. Now emergency vehicles will be the exception to this. You will still see them fly through the intersection at will, but basically they will fly through the intersection and disobey the traffic lights, which you would see that in real life too. Well, now we've gone through all the steps necessary to set up time traffic lights at one intersection. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If there are any parts of the time traffic lights function in the traffic manager presence edition mod that you would like further explanation on, feel free to note that in the comments below. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this tutorial, I said, I'm going to try to go above and beyond anything I have seen any other tutorial do on time traffic lights. And again, ultimately you're the judge of that. So feel free to comment below as to whether or not I accomplished that goal. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. Click on that box in the bottom left hand corner right now to see a video you're almost guaranteed to love. This video was selected just for you by YouTube. And they know what you like. So what are you waiting for? Click on that box now, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video.